Afternoon, VC. All right, this is going to be probably a lengthy one. Uh, big update. Some VCLT here. I uh, got a record convention dig from this morning here. A few things that came in um, and a stop at Lunchbox. So uh, quite a bit going on with records this week as compared to last. Um, first off, I got this really really cool VCLT package from Jason out in, from Southern California. Uh, channel is Hackman377. Uh, I'm sure quite a few of you are aware of his channel. Um, he shows a lot of great jazz, uh, a lot of great Brazilian, a lot of stuff I'm not familiar with. Um, and he's always digging. Um, and he's, you know, not just digging in record stores. He's really out there digging for records. Um, it's really cool. Seems like a really nice guy, someone that would be cool to hang out with. Uh, so next time I'm out in California, I'll have to hit him up. But uh, to the package, um, first thing in this package is this 7-inch, and I'm not sure exactly uh, where this is from. I would assume Brazil, but uh, Lascarina Bubalina, I believe is the name of it. I can't find anything on this on Discogs. But I'm going to play a sample from this. I'll probably play the B-side at the end of the video of this, so stick around for that. Um, Maria Beraldo, Rafa Barreto, Thomas Harris, and Manu Maltez. Um, four songs. This is phenomenal. Avant jazz. Uh, you've got this, what sounds like to me uh, bass clarinet on this. Uh, some deep guitar sounds. Uh, some different vocals happening so there's a male vocalist which is, he almost does a spoken word thing at the beginning I think it's in Spanish I don't think it's in Portuguese and on the B side uh, you have a ma the male singing on the first cut and then the B the last track is female and she is great um, and this is this is really really cool seven inch um, uh, next he's he sent me a bunch of stuff from Mystic Records, which is a Southern California punk label. Um, and the first thing, and I spun this today, is the Opry Outcasts, the Nashville compilation. So this is uh, like an EP with four bands from Nashville, I would assume, uh, Nash Vegas, from around 1990, um, that Doug Moody put out. And uh, I dug all four bands on this. And this is on Purple Wax. Um, good heavy stuff from the 90s um, and it's not none of this is really punk uh, it's all on the heavier rock you know more on the rock end of things um, Mayday on the first side that band they have a song heavy as hell vocalist sounds a lot like Mark Arm from Mud Honey which is really cool and I really dug Word Uprising that band on the B side and the song People sounds like a band that could have opened for us back in the 90s uh, when I say us, I mean five times down the band I used to roadie for. But, um, yeah, this is pretty good. There's a band on the A side, Rednecks in Pain. What a great band name. Song Scatterbrain. Good stuff. Um, very stoked for that. Um, also on Mystic Records, he sent this uh, split EP. Uh, so you got Modern Enemy on the A side and Fatal Error on the B side. Modern Enemy was, they're good, but they're not not great. Um, the vocalist is a little plain f for me. I think I'd probably appreciate these guys more if I saw them live. But Fatal Error, the tempo picks up. Uh, Modern Enemy is more of a hardcore band, whereas Fatal Error is more punk. And yeah, really good drummer, better guitars. Um, there's this, I'll show you what, I'll show you the labels and everything. This is on Red Wax. It's got a really cool label. Got a Mystic label. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, the song, third song, I Remember Drugs. Great freaking song. And actually, it'd be even better if it didn't have any vocals, because it's just the musicians are killing it on it. But they do a cover of Rise Above from Black Flag, which is a good version of it. So, yeah, I really dig Fatal Error on this. So, 
yeah, into the punk collection this goes. And then the thing that was really cool that I didn't know he was sending um, was these books from Mystic Records that talk about the label and show a bunch of the all the different covers and stuff. And this is this is actually autographed by Doug Moody, the owner of the label. In here, there's a personalized note to his friend about their 50th anniversary. I mean, this is really cool, and they, they put out a lot of bands that otherwise wouldn't get put out. Um, there's a lot of cool photos and flyers and album covers and things like that in here to explore. And then he sent a second book, too, of Mystic Records. Um, so these are really cool. Uh, I'm enjoying the hell out of this. Dr. No. You know? Um... So thanks, man. Um, really cool stuff. And then, last but not least in the package was this record, and I love this. This is Anka Combo Ubisunt on Gama Gringa Discos from Brazil. Um, I think this got released. I'll have to look at it here, but um, it's a really nice gatefold. And it's uh, got this little kind of book middle here but you get to see the sax player and guitar player there um this is avant the b-size really gets free free jazz uh, but with a brazilian flavor it's, there's a bit not a lot but a bit of folk brazilian in it too uh with the guitar um but it's just on plain plain black wax but um I really, really like this record. Um, the beginning, it's a little bit busy on the guitar for me, but once they settle in, holy shit, yeah, great sax playing on this. Uh, phenomenal, in fact. I wonder what I got in here. Oh, there's some, oh, there's some uh, Goma Gringa stickers in there as well in with the record uh, that he sent. Yeah, I had no idea about this label, no idea about this group. Uh, so this is absolutely fantastic. Um, highly recommend checking that out if you can. The 7-inch was not on Discogs. This this was on Discogs, and it's like one of uh, 250 copies. So that was very nice of Jason to send that my way. Uh, next, we have just a few that have come in the door. Um, three issue of Infinity by Khan Jamal on Jazz Room Records. This came from Dusty Groove. They had, their sale is still going on. They had a lot of stuff marked well off. Um, and originals on this are insanely priced, especially how sh with how short this record is. Um, like 16 minutes aside, 16 plus minutes aside. Um, and it's more of the straight ahead stuff, but. Byron Lancaster's on alto, Sonny Murray drums, Dwight James is also here on the kit, uh, of course, Conchmall and Vibes and Marimba. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a really great record, um, so I was happy it got reissued. Cheaply. Next uh, is a label I'm starting to collect. Well, it's not even a label, it's Private Pressings. Um, the artwork is all done by Eric Pank. Uh, this great uh, drummer pianist from Germany and this is uh, TTT aspects of the New York New York New York situation and it's a double LP this took a long time to get here from Germany so this one's been out in mail world for a while wasn't sure if it was gonna come but here it is finally um, Frank Wright is on the sax Butch Morris cornet Mr. Walney on bass um, yeah, air pink on piano and flute. Phenomenal free jazz. Um, this this stuff is, I think, early to mid '80s. Um, not a lot of information on some of these um, being private pressings, but uh, a nice little pocket of records. Uh, some of this stuff is really mind blowing. Um, and phenomenal it's just some phenomenal work from these musicians um a whole little period of stuff i had no idea about till recently so happy to get my hands on some uh next
next. This came from, oh, let's see, where did it come from? Oh, this t-shirt place up in Raleigh. They sell records, too, for certain bands, so they sell Boris records. And this was uh, their album, 1985. Uh, I think this was recorded around 2011. Um, not released till 2019 on Fang's Anal Satan. What a great label name. Uh, but this is more rock, pop from Boris. Nothing too crazy. Um, so there's that one. Great cover. Love the cover on that. Uh, let's see. Next Thursday night, I went and saw The Who from Mongolia at the Fillmore. And I put up a video, short clip, but uh, holy shit, were they great. Um, it's an experience for sure. Uh, the, the lead singer can be a little bit theatrical, but it, it works to perfection. Um, two electric cellos, two, dr two drummers, well, one a percussionist, one a drummer. The percussionist playing the really big, heavier drums, but um, they, get, they got a lot of guitar sound, it's, it's, it's really good. So I did grab their CD from them. Um, yeah, Gehrig is the CD. Uh, this has got bonus tracks on it, I guess, on this version. Um, so yeah, The Who. Check out that video I posted of them. God, they were, that was festive. Um, great gig. And after work, Friday, I... Uh, Went in the lunchbox to get the new release from Cave In. So we've got uh, Heavy Pendulum. So I grabbed the CD and the vinyl of this. And the CD is on this gold CD. Great band from Boston. Been around forever. Steven Brodsky, he's in every band <laughs> right now. I mean, he's, in, he's playing with everybody. Um, so he's playing with Quicksand, Converge, Cave In, Old Man Gloom, Mutoid man, he's 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 a busy man. Um, here's the record, uh, limited to a thousand, translucent gold. So I grabbed that, and then I got two used items, cheap. Uh, Jimmy Smith Live root down on CD. I have the vinyl, I have an original, but uh, this is for the car. And I got this because the guitar player absolutely slays fools on this. Uh, Arthur Adams, my God. Some of the sickest guitarists, or sickest guitar I've heard on a record. Uh, yeah, ever. It, it, it's, and Jimmy Smith is no slouch on this either. So that, that was like five bucks. And then I did find this in the used uh, Mets, Live at the Opera House. Great band out of Canada, heavy, a lot of groove. Um, I don't like their earlier stuff, but the Atlas Vending album, which they were touring, is fucking great. And this is on there. This is one of Scott of Lunchbox's favorite bands. So then we got Mets live at the Opera House. That was cheap. Let's see. Uh, Dylan from Noble got in touch with me. He is starting to get in a bunch of stuff from Zambia, from Africa, and it's just insane. So this is a record that he's had an original of for a while. I was there when he got it, and he showed it to me and played it in the shop, and I dug it. It's real funky. It wasn't like their Zamrock records. Um, it was different, and I dug that. So I'd always kind of had it on, on the want list, and it rarely comes up. If it does, it's somewhere overseas or in Africa, and the condition is dicey at best. So this is one I was probably never going to order. He got three copies from this dude from Africa, so I uh, ended up getting one. Uh, Witch, moving on, on Shed, an original. Um, and the record is, I'd say, VG. And the record covers definitely VG minus, probably more like, good plus I'd say on the cover um, but that's just what you get with Zambian records this is this is on the funkier end of things but it's it's a great one from which and he's got two more copies of that up there um, 
that brings us to today's record convention. I didn't have high expectations. I usually don't. I know there's one vendor I'm pretty happy to see every time I go there. He's from South Carolina, this guy. I think his name's Mike or Michael. Um, older guy, kind of a hippie-looking dude, and he's he, he has great stuff. Um, John and I always find good stuff from him when John, when John goes with me. Um, and then there's the guy that runs it. I always usually grab something from him. Um, but they had a couple new vendors today. One had a bunch of crazy rare psych on the wall. It was all super pricey. Way, way out of my range. Um, and there was the, the other, the younger guy, he had a lot of crazy jazz on his wall, which I think Dylan was going to get his hands on anyway. Uh, so that was way out of, you know, cool to see. Fun to, fun to look at. Um, but the South Carolina guy, he brought his uh, 45s, and he, he usually doesn't bring his 45s at all. So he had his 45s. So I looked through them, and I did find two. Um, and I got uh, the Rolling Stones painted black. With the picture sleeve on London. So this was a really cool one. Um, probably my favorite song from the Rolling Stones. So there's that. Jim. And also this. I'm not sure what this is. I, I just got in the door um, not that long ago. The Stooges open up and bleed. This is on, uh, what is this? It's on green wax. I don't know. This could be a boot or something. I don't even know what this is. But, uh, so there's that. I grabbed it. It was cheap, so I thought, what the hell? It's the Stooges. You can't go wrong. So I grabbed that. Um, in the punk section, he had Minor Threat out of step on Discord. Uh, this is an original, so this was a really great find. And because it had some damage there on the corner. I was able to get a really good deal on that. And then he also had this record cheap, uh, Charge GBH, Leather, Bristle, Studs, and Acne. So some great punk here. Um, I think this is an original copy of this as well. So I was happy to grab that from that guy. And then the young guy, the, the new, the other vendor, I, w I wasn't, hadn't seen him there before. He had the crazy jazz wall, but he had this in the blues section. Uh, Mississippi John Hurt Folk Songs and Blues on the Piedmont label. Um, not a label you see every day. Um, and the reason I grabbed this was because of how nice the vinyl is as far as being a record from 1963. It's in pretty good shape. It's dusty. It just needs to be clean. But other than that, there are no scratches on this thing. So... Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like it's been played much at all. It just looks like it's sat around gathering dust. So, um, I love Mississippi John Hurt, one of my favorite blues guitarists, singers. So, that was a cool find. Um, found this for probably 10 bucks. Uh, Dollar Brand African Sketchbook on Enya. I think this is a U.S. copy. But Dollar Brand's on flute and piano on this. So this should be some great stuff from this amazing South African pianist. This was recorded in Bern, Switzerland. Very cool. One I didn't have. Dollar Brand. And back to the Rolling Stones. Mazzy had played a song off this record in one of his videos where he was driving around San Francisco up in the hills near all these really cool looking houses and it's a real trippy song and I really dug it so he told me what record it was on and it's on uh, their Satanic Majesty's Request I think it's 2000 Light Years From Home is the song and uh, here it is with the lenticular cover an original pressing with the insert um, very excited about this find and it was relatively cheap um, I don't I'm there's a lot, I see this record all the time, but I was happy to get this copy. I mean, it's in nice shape. It ain't in fantastic shape, but it's pretty nice. Uh, but it has the original insert, and it's on the, on the London. It does need a clean. But I think this, what, the first 
US maybe. At least that's what it was advertised at. So that's what we got here. Um, with that beautiful cover. And I only had one other Rolling Stones record, so now we have a now we have a second. So there's that. And then of course I can't go to this convention without grabbing a couple sunrods that I don't have. Um, so they have the the cheap reissues on uh, Saturn Research. Somehow they still have a, a few of these around. Uh, this is when Sun comes out. And then last but not least, we've got uh, Continuation. This one I'm excited about because this one, I, first time I've come across it in a bin. But uh, yeah, the cheap Saturn reissue, Saturn Research reissues. Um, awesome. More Sun Ra. Can't get enough. Uh, we'll see if we can do a needle drop here on that uh, South American 7-inch that Jason sent. See if you dig this. Na prateleira a gaveta empenou 